I was thinking the other day, I was praying, and I just uh, uh, thinking about a situation, and I began to pray. And you know, sometimes when we look at things through the eyes of man, it looks so impossible and so great that we think that it can never, ever be accomplished. But when you begin to look at things through the eyes, or through faith in God, it changes all your perspective. It does for me anyway. And I, I was praying, and as, as we sometimes do, I was letting flesh and the devil get the best of me. And uh, Scripture is profitable. And when you read it, sometimes you might not recall exactly what you read. But I believe if you read it with an earnest heart, then God will bring it back to your remembrance. And uh, this scripture, I, 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 I guess I've read time and time again. But as I began to pray, God brought it back to my remembrance. And it just did something for me. I want to share it with you tonight. Hebrews chapter number 3, verse number 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, insomuch as he hath built the house, hath more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses fairly was faithful all his house as a servant, and all his house as a servant, for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 1. The Bible says, Wherefore seeing we are also compassed about with such so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, is set down on the right hand of the Father and on the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your Minds. These two passages of scriptures that I read to you tonight, you know, the author tells us, the writer here, tells us twice to consider him. Amen. Jesus Christ tells us to consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, that she be wearied and faint in your minds. He also tells us to consider, amen, that high priest, amen, that apostle, Jesus Christ. Amen. The priest of our profession. Thank God. Let's bow our heads tonight. Ask God to help us in the remainder of this service. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all you've done. Thank you for your goodness and your wonderful works to the children of men. God, we thank you for all that you've done for us. How you've helped us and blessed us this day. And God, we ask you to come by. Amen. Help us tonight in this service. Lord, we be so careful to give you all the honor. And praise and glory. We thank you for all that you've done for us. It's in your wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. You, what you have to understand here, when you read the book of Hebrews, and uh, these other books, the book of Galatians, Ephesians, Romans, and all these other books, not only is this word written to us, but it was written to churches of that day. And the writers here, are writing to churches that are infants. Amen. They've just been born, established, and they're in their, in their beginning. And they're having times of trial just like we do. And they're having times of struggle just like we do. And he writes to them here, admonishing them, encouraging them to carry on in the faith. Now we look at the setting here in Hebrews. And as I looked at this and began to read what the writer wrote to us, I thought about the great persecution that was going on at that time. 
And these men and women were being persecuted from their, for because of their faith. Amen. Some of them had left behind tradition. They had left behind ceremony. And they had grasped hold of Christ. Amen. All that they had been learned throughout those years. And as in that, they forsook the law. Amen. But they got a hold to Christ. Amen. The founder of the law. And they began to live for Him. And with that came great persecution, not only from the world, but from also the so-called church. And the religious leaders of that day, amen, they began to exile them, while others began to, amen, become martyrs for the faith, because men were haters, amen, of God, and they saw what was happening and they begin to try to quiet the church. That's why we must realize, as, as the writer here writes, he's writing to a church under persecution. Amen. A church that's undergoing great trial and affliction because of their faith. Amen. They became brethren. They became part of the house of God. And men hated them because of that. And they did all that they could to persecute them, to try to make them turn from the faith. Amen. And here we find the writer writing unto them in chapter number 3. And he said, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Amen. These men that were being persecuted, Amen. He writes to them, these partakers, Amen. These holy brethren, Amen. Of the heavenly calling. I thought about that, the people that he wrote to. These men and women that were holy in their stance for God, they were sanctified. They had come out from among the world and they had become a separate and different people. And folks didn't like that. Amen. They didn't understand that concept. And they tried to disquiet it or they tried to do away with it. Uh, talking to someone today about a sign that they have or a saying that the church has. And uh, it was, uh, hey man, you think we're crazy. They thought Noah was crazy until it rained. I thought that's good in its sense. But I said, do they really think that your church is crazy? I mean, come on now. I mean, do they really think that you're crazy? What difference do you have than them? Amen. How can you say that you're set apart from the world and that you're different from the world and such that they look at you and say that you're crazy? You act like them. Amen. You do business like them. Amen. You lie still. And amen. You haven't laid off the things of the world. And they don't think you're crazy. Why? Because you've compromised. Help us, Lord, to be like these men and become brethren. Amen. Amen. Part of the family of God. Amen. Jews and Gentiles alike. Amen. Grafted into that heavenly family. Amen. Sons adopted. Amen. By the Father. Amen. God Himself. I'm glad to tonight that we have that spirit of adoption and that we too have been grafted in and become part of that holy, amen, brotherhood uh, as children and amen of God. Uh, amen. He begins to write to these holy brethren and knowing that, uh, he says uh, that are partakers of that heavenly calling. Uh, amen. Those that have got their eyes focused. Uh, amen. On that calling from above. Uh, amen. Those that have been called out. Uh, amen. Those that have got their mind on the gospel. Uh, amen. Those. Uh, amen. That have one man I read after said uh, had that tongue from a heavenly world. Uh, amen. Calling them out from among the sinner. Uh, amen. Calling them out from the rambles of the world. Uh, and calling them the high ground. Uh, I'm glad tonight that heaven still calls. Uh, I'm glad tonight that it still tugs on our heartstring, God, amen, helps us to realize uh, that there is a better place uh, and a better home after a while. Uh, amen, was it not Paul that wrote unto us uh, and said, if we have hope in this world only, uh, we have all men most miserable. Uh, I thank God tonight that there is a high calling. Uh, amen, there is a high power. Uh, and these men and women had came to no man. Uh, they had been affected by it. Uh, that call on their life uh, had 
cause them to separate from family and friends, uh, that call on their life, uh, had caused them to lay down traditions uh, and ceremonies they had been taught since children, uh, and grab a hold of Christ uh, and follow Him with all their might. Uh, amen. They laid aside the sin uh, and the weight that so easily beset them, uh, and they begin to run that heavenly race with patience, uh, enduring temptation, uh, enduring trial, uh, they, they might inherit that promise of eternal life. Uh, I wonder tonight, does that heavenly calling still beckon us? Uh, I wonder tonight, do we still feel that tug uh, on our hearts and lives? Uh, are we yearning for that city? Uh, I said, are we yearning tonight for that heavenly home? Uh, amen, that Christ has for us. Uh, do we count ourselves as part of the brotherhood, uh, as part of the church? Uh, help us, God, to keep our minds uh, and our hearts, uh, amen, set on Him. Amen. You know, a lot of times folks feel that tug and all oh, how they follow it with all of their mind. But as the things of the world begin to weight them down, uh, as their eyes are blinded by Satan himself, uh, amen, they begin to lose that calling in their life. Uh, amen, they begin to lose that sensitivity uh, to the voice of God uh, and the things of the Lord. I said, help us tonight. Uh, I said, help us tonight. Uh, amen. To not only uh, uh, strive to enter in, uh, but help us tonight to strive with all of our might, uh, all of our mind, and all of our heart uh, to enter into that rest that Christ has uh, for every child of God. Amen. He begins to write unto us. Amen. Or to them. Uh, amen. And says, your holy brethren uh, and partakers uh, of that heavenly calling. Uh, he said, consider uh, tonight. Uh, amen. Consider now the apostle and high priest uh, of our profession, Christ Jesus. Uh, and now this is a church that's under persecution. Uh, and he's talking to the partakers of this church uh, and those that are being under persecution. And he says, I want you to consider, amen, Christ our apostle. And not only that, but our high priest, amen, of our profession, Christ Jesus. Amen, what we must have tonight, amen, to keep that heavenly calling is a heavenly focus on him. Amen, tonight he tells us to ponder. He tells us to consider Christ. Amen. And that's not just a dashing glance. Uh, amen. That's not just a sideways look uh, to check him out just for a moment. Uh, but it says, ponder in your minds. Uh, contemplate and consider. Uh, amen. The apostle uh, of our profession. Uh, the high priest of our profession. Uh, amen. Christ Jesus. Andrew Murray said, if you take that word, consider, and break it down in the original text, what it says is like a stargazer. Amen. was take his looking glass and look into the stars uh, and begin to contemplate the sky. Amen. To figure out uh, their settings uh, and to figure out, uh, amen, where they are and what they are. Uh, amen. Not just a mere glance, uh, but a time of looking and wondering uh, and trying to figure it out and make it all have place. Uh, and that's what we are to do tonight. Uh, amen. I have learned when I fix my gaze on Him, uh, when I consider how great and mighty He is, uh, the things of this world begin to dim. Uh, amen. Problems don't look so big. Uh, amen. Situations don't look so impossible. Uh, when I consider Christ, uh, amen, we are to ponder this man. Uh, Notice now it goes on to say that this man was greater than Moses. Uh, that was a servant of the house. Uh, amen. Moses in all his right was a great man. Uh, a man that led the children of Israel out by the power of God. Uh, amen. With a high hand and victory in their hearts. Uh, amen. A man that led them through the wilderness. Uh, amen. Was it Moses that received the law of Sinai? Uh, it was Moses uh, that God worked through. 
through uh, for many years. Uh, but you know what it happened? Uh, amen. The church here uh, and other churches had got their focus on Moses. Uh, and they were looking at the Old Testament. Uh, amen. They were all caught up in what Moses did. Uh, and they had got their eyes out of that new dispensation uh, that was in Christ Jesus. Uh, amen. They had got their eyes off of him. Uh, at what the writer's trying to get them to do. Uh, to realize, yet yeah, Moses had his fame. Uh, and yes, honor is due that man, for he was a great man. Uh, a man of God, led by God. Uh, but it says there's one greater. Uh, amen. Moses was just a servant of the house. Uh, amen. He was one of the ones uh, that did the bidding of the master. Uh, he was one of the ones that were led uh, by the master's instruction. Uh, he said, let us consider the one that built the house. Uh, Amen. God the Creator. Uh, let's consider tonight the son of the house uh, as far greater than any servant. Uh, amen. Tonight I am a servant in the house uh, of the son of the house. Uh, amen. Christ Jesus the author uh, and the finisher of my faith. Uh, and when I consider him, uh, when I begin to contemplate, uh, Amen. the Bible says consider the lilies. Uh, it says consider the fravens. Uh, it tells us to consider different things. Uh, but tonight, looking unto Jesus, uh, the author and the finisher of our faith, uh, I tell you, I get excited uh, when I begin to realize uh, whom I'm serving. Uh, amen. Who's watching over me uh, and who's in control uh, of my life. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, when I begin to ponder, amen, that apostle of our profession, amen, that one that was sent from God, amen, that one, amen, that was sent on a mission, and that's what an apostle is, one that's sent on a mission. Amen. Christ was sent on a mission, amen, to come and die for sinful man, and that's exactly what he did. He became our high priest, amen, the one that made the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, that you and I would have life uh, and have it more abundantly. Uh, amen. You read the book of Hebrews uh, and time and time again. Uh, amen. In chapter 1 uh, it says, uh, Amen. God at sundry times uh, and in diverse manners spake in times past uh, unto the fathers by the prophets uh, hath in the last day spoken unto us by his Son. Uh, he hath appointed over all things uh, by whom also he made the worlds, uh, who being the brightest of his glory, uh, and the express image of his person, uh, and the upholding of all things by the word of his power. Uh, he said in time past, uh, it was the prophet Isaiah that said, Thus saith the Lord. Uh, in times past it was Ezekiel. Uh, in times past it was Hosea uh, and Malachi. Uh, but now we have the Son of God uh, that speaks to the heart of men. Uh, and when I consider uh, that one sitting on the right hand of Father, uh, when I consider how great God is, uh, and Jesus is His express image, uh, the brightness of His glory, uh, amen, the power of His Word, uh, I get excited knowing uh, that He is on my side. Amen. And made that ultimate sacrifice. I said he made that ultimate sacrifice that you and I might have this life and have it more abundantly. Amen. I believe it was J.C. Ryle that said there are many portraits painted of Christ. Amen. Some paint him uh, as an effeminate carpenter's son. Uh, amen. Some paint him as a compromiser. Uh, amen. Uh, some paint him as a lunatic, a liar. Uh, amen. How do you paint him tonight? Uh, I mean, when you can Consider how great he is. Uh, what is the outcome? Uh, amen. Was it not Peter that said unto him, uh, Hey, truly thou art the Son of the living God. Uh, I wonder when you consider how great he is. Uh, what is your final word on it? Uh, I said, What is your final word on it? Uh, amen. The writer said, uh, Amen. In chapter number two, uh, he talked about the fall of man. Uh, he talked about how they lost the men 
dominion. Amen. But it said, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom all things, and by whom all things, in bringing many sons unto God glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Amen. When I consider the captain of my salvation, when I consider the one at the wheel, amen, the one that's guided me through the storms of life, amen, the one who's taking charge of navigation, amen, I can't help but realize I can make it. I consider myself, I see my faults, I see all my shortcomings, I see the times I didn't do right, I see the failures in life, but when I consider him, I see perfection. When I consider him, I see a priest. When I consider him, I see a protector. When I consider him, I see a provider in the wilderness. When I consider him, I see power to overcome the devil. For the weapons of my warfare are not mighty. Amen. But I have not called him a mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. When I consider him, amen, I consider uh, he's my provider in that. Uh, he is the bread of life. Uh, amen. He is the living water. Uh, he is the breath that I breathe. Uh, he is the one that makes intercession. Uh, I wish somebody give this tonight uh, and begin to consider how great God is uh, and how great his son is uh, that makes intercession on our behalf. Amen. If you truly consider, come on now, if you truly consider what Christ has. I remember them telling about a lady that I worked with won the lottery. And uh, years ago, I wasn't there when she won it. One million dollars on a scratch-off ticket. And uh, she said, it didn't work the next day. It's got no Miss Paul yet. She'll never get in a hurry. She's one speed. Amen. This is how she is. Ain't nothing wrong with it. She's one speed. And I don't care what's going on. It could be one person. It could be a thousand people. She's one speed. And uh, so they come in that morning. So everybody's about to work. She comes in about 9.15. She drives all the way from McCray. Amen. 65 years old. I believe 66 years old. And uh, said so she come in walking that morning. Walked into the drugstore. Said she did what she normally do, does. And put up her stuff. She began to do the daily task. Amen. She had this little set thing she does. Said she was doing all those things. Never, never saying a word. Never saying a word. Mr. Michael said all of a sudden his daddy walked in. He had heard about the big winnings. And that somebody in Georgia had won it. And uh, he walked in. He said, looked over at it and said, Hey, Paulette. said, he didn't know nothing about it. said, Paulette, you reckon you're going to go claim your winnings today? Hey, man, after you won that $1 million. And I uh, said, she's walking behind Mr. Michael. She said, yeah, I was going to ask Michael if he let me off about dinner to drive to Macon and uh, see what I could do about that. He said, everybody just stopped. I said, Paulette, you really won a million dollars? She said, yeah, I won. So I got by 2 o'clock last night and checked my ticket. I had won a million dollars. Said she never did break stride. Said she never got excited, never even hardly cracked a smile. Said she liked that. And uh, but Mr. Michael said, you ain't going by yourself. He called somebody, a driver all the way to make it. Said, you're going right now. And uh, she said, when I began to consider, when I was going up there, how real this was, I was about to receive some money. So then I began to get excited. I thought about that. I know it's carnal. I don't gamble. I ain't playing the lottery. But let me tell you tonight, amen, when I begin to consider how great he is, I didn't mean, I just glance sometimes and say, well, church is a good thing. I, and I'm glad for Christ. I, you know how it is. I, it takes a little more than that. I, but when I consider how he pulled me out, I, when I consider how he's kept me all these years, I, when I consider through every storm, I, he's made a way. I, when I Consider every burden uh, he's put on me has not been too heavy. Uh, when I consider his suffering uh, and how that he endured. Uh, amen. What did the writer say to us? Uh, amen. Seeing we're compassed about by such a great cloud of witnesses. Uh, he said, went on to say, looking unto Jesus, uh, the author and the finisher of our faith. Uh, considering how he endured. Uh, in my words, a persecution of sinners. Uh, amen. The rivalry. Uh, amen. 
around uh, adversity of men uh, and made it through. He said, you are not to faint and be weary. Uh, amen. The next time you find yourself knocked down, uh, the next time you find yourself uh, in that mire, uh, amen, of depression uh, and despondency, uh, amen, won't you look up and begin to consider him? Uh, when you wake up in the morning, uh, won't you tell yourself, I serve a mighty big God. Uh, I believe it will excite you. Uh, I believe it will help you to walk the day through, uh, uh, knowing that there's victory. Uh, when I consider him, I consider, uh, amen, the authority he has uh, to speak the world into the existence. Uh, amen, the authority he has uh, to speak peace to my storm. Uh, the authority he has over the enemy. Uh, when I think of him, uh, I think about his origin. Uh, amen, who has no beginning uh, and has no end. Uh, for in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, uh, and the Word was God. Uh, when I think about Him, uh, I think about His love. Uh, amen. No man has greater love than this, uh, that He laid down His life for His friends. Uh, for God so loved the world, uh, that He gave His only begotten Son. Uh, I know this is elementary tonight. Uh, I know it's basic knowledge, uh, but we've got our eyes off the prize. Uh, we've got our eyes on the worldly things, uh, on the trials of life. Uh, won't you ponder tonight? Uh, I say, won't you consider right now uh, how great Christ is uh, in your life? Hey Amen. Sometimes at work when things get where you just don't, you know, you're stressed out, folks telling you this and doing that, I begin to think about Him. How great he is. How he knows. Is that song he knows? He cares? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. He knows. He cares. I begin to consider he's watching me. I begin to consider he knows my future. He knows my past. He knows where I'm at. He knows where I'm going. I begin to consider, amen, ain't nothing he ain't can't control. Ain't nothing that he can't handle. Amen. All right, look at chapter number 11. I want to have to turn there right now. But you look at these men, Gideon. Amen, you look at Abraham. You look at all these other men that did great things in the name of the Lord. Accomplished great things. You know what it was? The walls of Jericho fell by what faith? By faith, armies were subdued. By faith, they stopped the sword. By faith, by faith, that goes on to tell us. What was it? They had their eyes on him. He and all those men made it. The Bible said if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came. Right. Hey Amen. If they had been mindful of that country, they might have returned. Isn't that what the Bible says? Amen. They might have turned back. Amen. Truly, if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out of, they might have had an opportunity to have returned. Amen. They could have planted their feet. Amen. Turned right back around and went home. Amen. Abraham could have went back to Ur of the Chaldees. Amen. He could have went back to that place that God called him out of. But now they have a desire, a better country that is a heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He hath prepared for them a city. And it goes on to talk about Abraham by faith. And it goes on to talk about Moses uh, and Jacob and Isaac uh, and all the others. Uh, I'm telling you tonight, uh, if we had been mindful of this world, uh, if we had been mindful of all the things that go on, uh, amen, we might get down and depressed. Uh, oh, but we begin to consider Jesus. Uh, I say when we begin to consider uh, the Son of the house, the master of the universe, uh, the author and the finisher of our faith, uh, the lion, uh, amen, of the tribe of Judah, uh, the king of kings and lord of lords, uh, our shield, our buckler, our refuge, uh, that high tower and the righteous run in and are saved, uh, the lily of the valley, uh, the rose of Sharon, uh, the I am that I am, uh, amen, the son of God, uh, the prince of peace, uh, that wonderful counselor, uh, uh, hallelujah, uh, amen. I can't say enough about him. Uh, and when I think about him, uh, I think about victory. Uh, I think about peace that passeth all understanding. Uh, I think about I'm on the winning side uh, when I consider him. Amen. I you know, sometimes 
we begin to look at things. We don't consider our best assets. And we're in a hurry. We begin to ponder or, or, or look at a situation and say, well, what can I do here? We don't really just sit down and say, well, I got this I could use and make things a whole lot easier. And then when we get into it, we think, I'm not thinking that. You ever been there? You doing something? You show, somebody says something to you, you say, why not think of that? I had that all the time. There it was, right at my fingertips. I could have used it. And here we are going through life and daily battles. Amen. And the writer says, consider him. In the midst of persecution. In the midst of all the trials going on. Won't you contemplate? Won't you ponder on Christ? I want you to ponder on Him. How beautiful. How great. How great thou art. Amen. I said, how great thou art. I mean, sometimes I'll be riding down the road, that song comes to my mind. And an angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God. I said, what a mighty God. You know, if we're not careful, and I'm closing, we'll let things just weight us down. And we just get so bogged down and, 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 and just, oh, this is just it's too much. It's All this is happening. Somebody said this. Somebody said that. When I consider what he endured and how he made it. And because he made it, I can make it. Amen. Amen. I feel encouraged in my heart. I said, I feel encouraged in my heart. Stand to your feet with us tonight. Oh, I, I think sometimes in life in general, we do not consider Christ. In our actions, in our daily affairs, we do not contemplate and ponder on what He would do and how He would act and how He would react. Help us, Lord. Now, what would Jesus do? Oh, does it mean it's just a bracelet or a t-shirt or a Bible cover? Amen. It's not a lifestyle. Help us to consider Him in all aspects of life. Help us to consider Him. Everybody would. Let's come gather in tonight. Ask God to help us. I said ask God to help us tonight. Amen. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. I said thank you tonight that we serve a great and mighty God. Thank you tonight that we serve a Father. Amen. In heaven that's able to.